Okay. Ron made a good point last night. He said, Heather, you tell people on the internet that you're praying for them, but you don't tell them what you're praying. He said a lot of people, especially the angry ones, have probably had an experience with some sanctimonious, holier than thou, scolding them, telling them you're a sinner and you're going to hell. Well, guess what? We're all sinners and we're all going to hell. So, you know, and it says in the Bible very clearly again and again and again, don't judge your brother. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our best deeds are filthy rags. Actually, it's like it that the translation is like dirty tampon. I mean, it, in God's eyes, our best deeds are, are like a dirty diaper. It's really, you know, very strong in that. So the only reason I'm going to heaven is because I believe in Jesus. Let, let me be clear on that, you know. So, what do I pray for you? Well, first of all, I have my guy, my missionary, well, part of my missionary. I like to think I at least buy him a bag of rice every month or so. I have my notebook. He's on the cover, but he's in a restricted area, so I'm not going to tell you where he is. Um, I have an atlas. So the first thing I do when I do my prayer time is I'll like open it up. Let's see who we're praying for today and Alaska. Seward, Alaska, praying for you. Then I pray for the whole world. Um, stuff like people to share the gospel, open doors to the gospel, open hearts to the gospel, courage and protection for Christian workers, resolve conflicts peacefully, safety for people to hear the gospel. There's a common theme here. Uh, bind and demonic forces at work and expose them for what they are. I feel that's very important. Guide and protect the leaders and administrators, if unsafe, lead them to you. Health for citizens, good food supply, safe employment, proper nutrition, good medical care, reasonable cost of living, etc. So that's you get that gets prayed for you every day, regardless of who or what you are. Um, then I pray for my sister. Um, she has some things going on. Um, then me. I have a whole page for me. Um, let's pick something at random. Uh, forgive my sins. I know I fail you. Please deliver Ron and I from hidden and willful faults. See? So, that's what I pray for me. Then I pray for the Muslims. If you are a Christian and you are not praying for the Muslims, shame on you. We are commanded to pray for them. Commanded. I will refer you to Matthew 5, 44 and Luke 6, 28. So, I pray for Jesus to be properly exalted, people to know him as Savior, protection for new believers and family, the teachers, protection for the evangelists and the curious, wisdom for those sharing, productive outreach on the ministries, more workers, courageous workers, etc. Then for the unreached. Now, this is... Hi, Baba! Meow! Meow! Hello, Mr. Kitty Cat! Hello! I have to pet the cat. Um, if you are what I term unreached, I think that lost is judgmental. Um, if you're not a Christian, I view you as unreached. So, hunger for God's truth, protection from demonic lies and delusions, open hearts for the gospel, courage to seek your truth, his truth, protection from false teaching, Deliverance from sins, addiction, shame, self-hate, hunger for God's truth, strong, courageous people to share the gospel with you, uh, understanding of God's word and guidance to proper passages. Like, you know, you ever done that thing where you open the Bible and you point that? Send them the right literature and links. Give them an appetite for it. I could give you a house full of Bibles, but if you don't want to read them, you won't. <laughs> and you're not going to experience God's love. Shower them with your love. See, this is the kind of thing I'm praying for you. Um, because I have something wonderful in God, and, and I want you to have that. And I just can't stand the thought of somebody living one day outside of God's love. Not to mention what happens when they die, which I have already covered. Then I pray for Ron, uh, my neighbors, people I give Bibles to. Now this is a fun one. I call them all recipients for obvious reasons. I'm um, giving them a Bible, a tract, my testimony, or a bag of candy with a scripture booklet. We've gone into that. 
open hearts and eager minds for the gospel, courage to read, listen, and act on what they get, understanding of God's word, guidance of proper passages, guidance for Ron and I as, I tes as we testify, put your words in our mouth, your love in our hearts, your thoughts in our head, guide me as I do the Bible and candy preparation, lead me to hungry people, lead hungry people to me. Ensure I have the right materials every day. Supplies, finish things to take, good stewardship. Help Ron and I to maintain a proper testimony. Bind up demonic influences. Good health for recipients, families, and friends, physical, mental, and spiritual. Guidance to proper teachers and churches. I don't want them getting sucked up into some horrible prosperity cult. Um, hunger for your word and time spent in prayer. Protection from false teachings, unity with other believers, give me your heart for them, very important. Show them your truth and fruitful distribution. Then, I have a whole page I pray for haters and like um, criminals and prisoners and thugs. Nothing against the prisoners per se, but for instance, um, like the guy who mugged me. Um, I have been physically attacked a couple of times in the course of my evangelism work. I've been physically attacked by other people. Um, I've been mentally abused. You know, I've, I've suffered some difficulties. So I'll pray um, salvation for them. And also, somebody's hateful to me. This, they, I figured they go in this category too. Salvation for them. Uh, repair any damage done by a bad witness to them, like a hypocritical, ugly person um, who, like, threw Jesus around. You know, I hate that. This goes more of, the, like, the thugs. Uh, deliver them from addiction. Give them a hunger for your truth. Uh, fellowship with strong Christians. Ah, one of my favorites. Please give them Bibles and gospel material. The hunger to check it out. Lead them to you. Put your forgiveness into our hearts, letting them and us see through your eyes. Raise up strong faith warrior chaplains. That goes more to like the criminals. Safety for chaplains. Give them a strong, loving family. Well, that can go to anybody. Put your love and mercy in their hearts. Um, and then I specifically pray for some people who have hurt me that I feel should be on the prayer list. Um, shower your love on them, but that gets prayed for everybody. And... Uh, missionaries, persecuted, evangelists. Evangelists get a couple pages. Um, gospel distributors get a whole page. Sick, injured, and the hurting. Um, please take care of them, friends, family members. Guide the doctors in diagnosis and treatment. Give them your peace. Lead them to you. And give them healing if that's your will. Sometimes healing is not in God's will. Oh, and the mentally ill. Uh, proper medication and treatment. The will to use it. Oh no, another cat! Lead them to you. Guide doctors in diagnosis and treatment. Guidance and peace for family, friends, and loved ones. Sometimes, I think with mental illness, the family suffers as much as the sick person. Then I pray for, like, uh, first responders, medical people, chaplains, um, and people who are engaged in financial and prayer support of uh, ministry. So that's what I'm praying for you. And... Unfortunately, these days, Jesus is not really a popular name, and if I talk about Jesus, some people are just going to see me as a very ugly, hate-filled, judgmental person. That's part of the price tag of being a Christian. Um, I think I have enough videos out there talking about my faith, how God's helped me, He's carried me uh, through just some very dark times. Um, when I was a small child, when I was older, battling the mental illness for 32 years with no medication, um, and a very challenging marriage. Um, he's he's always been there, and he always will be there for me. And I know no matter what happens today, tomorrow, or any time in the future, I'm never alone. And I really want other people to experience that. And I want them to experience God's love, to know that we have a God who died for us. And, you know, I can't get on the bus 
without a ticket. I can't get on a plane without a ticket. And you can't get into heaven without accepting Jesus as your Savior. And if you're going to judge me for that, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you the truth. 